So today we have Jan Yi from Good Food Fund and title of this workshop is Building Good Food Movement in China. The Beijing-based Good Food Fund was founded by internationally acclaimed filmmaker, activist, and 2009 Yale Award Fellow Jian Yi in 2007, and the organization is run by Chinese staff. It is part of the China Biodiversity Conservation and Green Development Foundation, one of the first national public foundations accredited by the central government. GFF promotes good food with a focus on reducing China's consumption of animal protein. In this workshop, Jen will share his experiences in constantly looking for the most impactful strategies to help alleviate sufferings of farmed animals in China, the world's largest food producer and consumer. Participants will be able to learn how his organization forges ahead despite the challenges and many of these pioneer endeavors have the potential to be applied elsewhere to reduce human consumption of animals. Uh, so the floor is all yours, Yi. Thank you. Yeah, so thank you for inviting me. I'm happy to um, share some of uh, our past experiences. And I hope, I hope that you know, this will be of some use to, uh, to you in your country and also for us to work together in the future. All right. So yeah, so my title is Building Good Food Movement in China in the 2020s. Uh, this year, the year 2020, is a very special year, as you know, we all would agree. Uh, it's a very, we had a very special beginning for the year, and this year is a very special beginning for the decade, for the coming decade as well. So uh, it's really important uh, what we do now, and, and so uh, hopefully in the next decade, we will have a better world for everyone, for all, for all Earthlings. And there's an interesting thing that I want to say about the 2020s, because in the last 10 years, in 2010s, uh, in China, we have seen a, uh, a vegan or vegetarian, because in China, Chinese, we don't have a different terms for the two. Uh, so I would probably say just vegetarian. Uh, we, had, we saw a vegetarian movement uh, in the last decade, which actually echoed what happened a hundred years ago in 1910s in China. Uh, so I actually recently wrote an article uh, about this. Uh, I called the first movement in 1910s, the first wave of vegetarian movement in modern Chinese history. And the, and the movement in the last 10 years in the 2010s as the second wave of vegetarian movement in the in modern Chinese history. So it's very interesting that, you know, these two movements, uh, they were, they were uh, exactly 100 years apart. Uh, but the first movement ended in failure uh, in 1920s and 30s. And so we hope, uh, and we, we, are, we are working our best uh, to make this current movement a success uh, in, in this new decade. Okay, so a little bit about my organization. Uh, uh, at, we, we are part of the China Biodiversity Conservation and Green Development Foundation, which is a national foundation. So, you know, China has a very uh, strict law on civil society, like who can work here, who cannot work here, you know, uh, international organizations have a lot of restrictions. So luckily we are a national foundation and uh, we can work uh, anywhere in the country. Um, and, and, and we are, as, as, we, as, as long as we uh, observe the laws. And, and the part that I founded and I'm, I'm running is called the Good Food Fund. Uh, we are founded in 2017. Uh, we are to promote good food to improve human health, animal health, and planetary health. Okay, so why? Why do we choose to work, focus on food? Uh, I myself is a, uh, has a filmmaking background. Uh, I made a first documentary on meat consumption in China uh, in 20, 2009, 11 years ago. And I became vegetarian after that. And, you know, I, I basically, you know, I was a meat lover and I never thought that this issue ever existed until I were, you know, I went to the field to film for my, for my documentary. And I was so shocked to see, you know, the environmental impact, the health risks, and of course, the, the animal suffering is appalling. Uh, so I just couldn't stand that. 
and I became vegetarian. Uh, and then uh, five years later, I became vegan. Uh, so, so that's my own passion, why I'm doing this. But then why uh, we choose to focus on food? Because we think uh, we, we might have, you know, uh, we are you know, able to do our best. We, we might have the biggest impact uh, on alleviating animal sufferings. Uh, let's look at this. Uh, so this is like something probably a lot of you already know. Uh, this is like the uh, biomass uh, infographic. Uh, we can see like uh, 50,000 years ago, there was, most, there was mostly uh, wild animals. And 11,000 years ago, uh, still, still there were mostly uh, wild animals. But today, uh, you look at the, the biomass of uh, comparison. Uh, so, uh, wild animals, uh, wildlife accounts for a very small percentage. And of the humans are now uh, account for a pretty much a large uh, uh, and the largest proportion, of course is the livestock, is, is farmed animals. So, so there, there is an astronomical number of uh, farm animals uh, in our world. And these animals, the only reason they exist is not for their own, you know, the, their own interest. The, the only reason they, they were here because we want to eat them. So, so, so that's, that's, a, that's a reality. And, and of course, uh, you know, as people, uh, activist in this area, you've seen these pictures uh, thousands of times. So I don't, I don't need to remind you about this. But the, the really, you, you, any, any sensible person, how can we justify this? You know, I, I can't think of anything uh, other than greed and, and stupidity uh, that can really justify the way we treat animals like this. And these animals, you know, they are, you know, in, we raise them to to serve ourselves, and and they and they are what happened. Okay, yeah. So so this is a tragedy. I I would call it a tragedy of our civilization. And I can't see I can't see a future for our civilization if we continue to treat other living beings like this. So this is just not we, you know it's not a future we want to have, and. Um, and then, and the reason we are raising animals like this is because we are eating too too many. Uh, we 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 have too much uh, uh, meat and animal protein in in our diet. And and then, uh, as we go on, uh, thirty years later, we will have more people, and we will have more people, and we will raise more animals. And and let's look at this. Uh, so today we have seven. Point seven billion people, and then uh, in, by uh, the middle of this century, we will have uh, uh, almost a hundred, uh, uh, almost a ten billion people, and then by 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 uh, twenty twenty seven, China is projected to be uh, overtaken by India as the most populous country in the world. So between now and uh, twenty fifty, half of the world population will be born in one of this uh, in, in these nine countries. Uh, India, Nigeria, Pakistan, Congo, uh, uh, Ethiopia, Tanzania, Indonesia, Egypt, and the U.S. And 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 this, you know most of these are developing countries. And you know if we look at China, you know how China developed itself in the last three decades. Uh, when we were developing ourselves, our uh, appetite for animal protein just soared. And so it's hard to imagine, you know when. When, when this new population joining us on this planet Earth, what would happen uh, to our to animals? So, so this is just not, um, we, talk, we often talk about our shared risks, uh, but I would think, you know, regard this as our shared sufferings. Um, so there are tons of, tons of, especially since uh, 2018, uh, there are tons of uh, evidence-based signs about, uh, about you know uh, the risks we are taking, uh, the way you know we are uh, by, uh, re as a result of our diets, and and that is precisely uh, the, the the starting point of our work here uh, of the Good Food Fund in China, because you know in China has a long tradition of Buddhism, and and Buddhism is a big advocate uh, advocate for uh, vegetarian vegetarianism. 
So we, we need to be very careful. You know, we, we don't, uh, our movements and our advocacy are not associated with, uh, with religion. Um, that will, you know, you know, give people, people and the government the wrong idea. That's what we really want to achieve. So everything we do is uh, based on very strictly on uh, evidence-based science. And, and we look at these uh, risks we are having. Uh, so, so one of the uh, scientific reports that we, uh, we quoted most is, uh, came out last year uh, in spring. It's called the Eat Lancer Report. And we actually did the China launch uh, uh, on our Good Food Summit, on the third Good Summit in August 2019. This, this is a groundbreaking work. Uh, this is uh, a work done in two years uh, by 37 top scientists from around the world. And uh, with really good representations from uh, different continents of the world and also from different disciplines of science. So it's very convincing. Um, scientific report. Of course, there are criticism about it, as, as you know, there are criticism for any scientific report. Uh, but um, so as shown by this scientific report, uh, if we want to stay uh, within the planet, planetary boundary by, by year 2050, we basically have to do, to do three things. Um, one is to uh, dramatically uh, shift to uh, a diet that is mostly plant-based, which is the red, uh, you know, the red part, as you can see. Now, uh, if we do that, you know, in the ideal world, if we do that, uh, if, you know, we will be able to uh, uh, stay within that uh, uh, circle, which is the um, bi planetary uh, uh, boundary. So, and then you were able to, uh, improve our production uh, to more uh, regenerative, then uh, we'll be the yellow. You know, in the ideal world, if we do our, do our best, uh, we'll be in the yellow. So, so we, we'll help us a little bit, but it won't, won't help us uh, to stay in, within the planetary boundaries. And if you look at the blue one, which represents uh, if we can cut our current food waste by half, uh, there will, we will be there uh, in, 2050. So we will, you know, improve a little bit, but still we'll be way out of the uh, planetary boundary. So this is very convincing. So basically the, the answer is very clear. You know, we have to, you know, if we want to have a future, we have to uh, dramatically switch, switch to a diet that is predominantly uh, plant-based. And of course, in the ideal world, if you can, you know, we, we should do all the three all the three of them, you know, we should also reduce our food waste. We should also improve our uh, production. So uh, a substantial shift towards a mostly plant-based uh, diet is strongly, strongly ad uh, advocated by uh, the scientific world now. Uh, there are many, many in this kind of scientific papers. I don't need to uh, quote them as, you know, in the interest of time. So I'd like to, what I do on the quote is this one sentence uh, from the Interlancer report. So food is the single strongest lever to optimize human health and environmental sustainability on earth. So the way I interpret, interpret, it, interpret this sentence is that, you know, every one of us has very limited time on, you know, on, on this earth. You know, we probably have 80 years, 90 years, and each of us has very little, uh, very limited uh, capacity. So if we are to devote our time, you know, limited time and limited capacity to one thing that will benefit humans and the environment the best, you know, you, you might want to consider uh, working in the food space. And I actually add one, one thing to this. So I, I, would, I would argue the same thing, you know, food is the single strong lever to, optim to alleviate animal suffering on earth. So yeah, so if you, you know, um, are interested in working in the food space, congratulations. You know, it's, it's probably one of the best ways you can contribute. So, um, so what we try to do is, um, as I said, you know, China has a very uh, uh, a long history of veganism uh, based on Buddhism. So we, this, is, uh, uh, this is our asset, but on the other hand, is our historical burden as well. So we have to be very careful how we promote uh, uh, the, you know, advance the interest for animals. So one thing we did, uh, and 
is we had relative success so far is to we try to put uh, our concern for animals in the larger context of food system transformation, which we think is very, very important. Because if you don't put this into context, uh, it, this will be targeted and people, uh, you know, you'll become the target. And it's, you know, you, you, it will be very hard for you to advance your, uh, your cause. So we, last year we public, we launched the, the Good Food Pledge. Uh, this is our way to, to put uh, our concerns for animals in the context for our larger, you know, interest of humanity. And, and we call it uh, our effort to, uh, to invent the, uh, the UN SDGs. I know, I know probably all of you know the UN SDGs, the sustainab sustainability goals. Uh, so, uh, so the UN SDGs, they have uh, 17 targets and these 17 targets served as like really concrete, uh, uh, concrete targets that people can, can work towards uh, if they wanna support uh, sustainability. So our Good Food Pledge uh, wants to serve the same purpose. So if you want to support sustainable, healthy, and more humane uh, food system, uh, this, is, uh, this is something that you, you probably want to follow. So we had eight principles. And the first one is, uh, we call it a plant forward. And the second one is animal welfare. Uh, and then healthy diets, meaning like, uh, you know, you should uh, healthy cooking and reducing waste, uh, you know, and, and so on. Uh, so we have eight principles and we put animal welfare here in the, con in the context. And this, this, as I said, we had relative success. You know, people love this, you know, you know but then once there, <laughs> like restaurants, uh, organizations, families, communities, individuals, they can all sign up for this. They can all sign this. And they said, I want to support this. You know, this is something I can do uh, because I love, you know, at least some of this I understand better than others, but I, you know, they all sound good. Um, and then the, once they are in, then we'll gradually to uh, tell them more. Uh, then you have an opportunity to tell them more. So, okay, so sorry, this is all in Chinese. Uh, so I will uh, explain the first one, the plan forward. Uh, why do we say plan forward instead of vegan or vegetarian? Uh, because you know, I, we we can I I can imagine you know even like by you know in the next ten years, uh, the one point four billion people in China will become vegetarian or vegan. Uh, that you know that would take some time, and and everybody is different. Uh, so, what is important for me, you know, I'm I'm you know I have to think why I'm doing this. You know, I'm doing this to help animals. I want doing this to help humans. So. How can I help them? You know, every day, you know, animals are suffering. You know, you can't waste a day. Uh, no, no day should be wasted. And so, however best you can make this happen, make it happen. Uh, so, so what we do is that okay, we think it's hard to you know convert a thousand people to be vegan, uh, but it's possible to to convert a million people uh, to eat uh, half uh, to to cut half of their meat. So. But then uh, I believe it's probably the same issue in your country. I'd love to hear that, you know, in our breakout session. Uh, in China, we have this language issue, and I heard uh, in Hindi as well, in India, uh, you had the same issue there as well. We don't have a word for, for vegan. So, so all, you know, all, we borrow this word from the English, English language. And so, so it becomes very um, uh, kind of uh, confusing sometimes for, for people in the movement. Um, and also, when you, whenever you say vegan or vegetarian, it becomes very uh, bin binary. It becomes like uh, black and white. You know, it's either us or them. You know, there are two kinds of people in this world: vegan, non-vegan. Uh, so it becomes like you know, our purpose is not to you know to push people away. Our purpose is to engage them to uh, to, to do something. You know, uh, to step forward a little bit. Uh, so what we saw uh, in the last ten years, we we had you know we are really good to see that there were. Uh, uh, the movement was building up in China, the momentum was building, but uh, the momentum was still mostly happening in the vegetarian or vegan, you know, we don't have, you know, as I said, we don't have words for that. I know in Hindi, my friend told me that they don't have words for vegan either. So they have to say, they have to say, like we say in Chinese, they have to say pure vegetarian or something. Um, so I use veg vegetarian uh, for, 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 you know, to, be, to make it easier. Um, 
So uh, it's mostly confined to the vegetarian uh, movement, to the vegetarian community. Uh, so people outside that community, uh, you, you rarely hear, you rarely hear organizations even, even talk about uh, reducing meat. Although, you know, some organizations understand we should reduce meat for all these benefits, but they don't want to talk about it because they, want to, they don't want to have that label. They don't want to, want to be labeled as a vegan organization, which they, they feel like they were not. And also, number two, they, they don't feel like, you know, they feel like they're going to alienate people. So, um, so we are probably the only organization uh, who are not labeled as a vegan organization or vegetarian organization. You know, we are called the Good Food Stump. Uh, so so we, are, we have been invited to many uh, really high-level uh, mainstream uh, workshops or conferences. And we are probably the only ones who are able to go to those conferences and speak about uh, animal suffering. Uh, and and the you know the urgency to to change this. So I have many examples of that. Uh, so I don't want to uh, list all of them. So that's what we tried to do. Uh, we don't want to be trapped by words. You know, we want to make change happen. Uh, so so we we advocate for plan forward uh, as the uh, our new. It's actually not just new, it's also traditional. So it's at the same time, traditional and new culinary culture in China. So we did a very interesting thing. Oh, sorry. We did a very interesting thing uh, last year uh, on Toutiao, which is you know, one of the most, uh, uh, one of the websites that has the biggest users in China, uh, number of users in China. Uh, we worked with them and we had like a, a, a like award uh, so we say we will award anyone who come up with one Chinese character. As I said, you know, we, we, we are running out of words. <laughs> anyone uh, who uh, find the best word to describe uh, a plan forward uh, dietary choice. Um, so we, and it was very successful. So this uh, call, open call was, uh, was read by 6 million people uh, and also 10,000 10, 10, people participated. They, get, they sent us uh, characters that they thought might, uh, might, might be a, a good fit. And then, uh, you know, we, we also uh, analyzed, uh, and it's interesting, mostly men, 90% uh, of them who send us the characters are men. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, maybe it's female. I know most you no, know, most vegetarians are are, are, are female. I, I don't know why it's usually men. And also, uh, so we analyzed the age as well. So we we and then we selected uh, a hundred finalists. Uh, so with these characters, uh, really interesting. They're characters that we never seen before. Uh, really like ancient characters, uh, but they have really really interesting uh, uh, connotations and 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 meanings. So. And then finally, we, we chose the winner, uh, and we, we gave her uh, uh, fifteen hundred dollars. Uh, this for for characters, you know, you can if you don't read Chinese, if you, even if you read Chinese, you don't know them because they are ancient characters. Uh, I, I didn't know them before, uh, so they look like you know even just by looking at them, that's the beauty of the Chinese language. You know, you can just look at them and, and see they're like pictures. You can see that they mean they mean grass. So the first one means grass. And the second means one means double grass, <laughs> and the third one means triple grass, and the last one means a full grass. So, so anyway, so um, we want this to describe you know people's dietary choices. Uh, so the, the 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 last one means like you're vegan, uh, and the the third one means you're a vegetarian, and you know and so on. So so that's really interesting, and that generated a lot of interest in, in public discussion. You know why somebody is so crazy? You know why they're giving fifteen hundred dollars for looking for Chinese words. And, and they love that because, you know, this connecting to our culture, you know, it's not something that's like, a, that's like a, a imported, like in the word vegan, you know, it's like completely foreign and imported and uh, you don't, you don't you connect to it. Um, but these words, even you don't, you don't know them, you know, you connect with them because they are like our, you know, our um, historical uh, um, heritage. So, so anyway, uh, so we want to promote this new and traditional food culture, which is plant forward. And what we do is we focus on four areas: um, food literacy for the public. Uh, we want to raise food literacy because you know if you don't, if your li food literacy becomes higher, 
you you are, you understand you know you want to know where your food comes from and you, when you want to know your food comes from most people I would say uh, their conscience they, you know they will have a hard conscience when they see animals are treated like that so and the second is a mission driven organization so we want to identify leading organizations who who can change and also lead and and third is leadership you know we 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 are uh, training uh, chefs training housewives and house husbands whatever we can find students uh, to be leaders. And the last one is uh, we want to work on policy because we think that, you know, it's not just the responsibility of the consumers uh, to to change this. Because, some, you know, what when you walk into a supermarket, you know, it didn't choose that. You don't choose the supermarket to be like that, you know. Sometimes uh, food, you know, is shaped, uh, our, what we food is available is shaped by our food policy, is shaped by industry. Of course, it's shaped by consumers, but it's not just the sole responsibility of consumers. So we have to work on on on, on policy as well. So, so we are the first one in China to start advocating for uh, in what we call integrated. Actually, in, we we coined that term in Chinese, integrated food governance. Um, so what happened in Wuhan uh, early this year, we think is a, a vivid example of the failure of our food governance. Uh, so it started from the wet market and things like that. So it's a failure of our food governance. Uh, so if we have integrated food governance, we we you know we we can avoid many you know we I cannot say we can avoid all of the, the risks, but we can minimize uh, a lot of our risks. So uh, so here are some examples of what we do. Uh, we have been uh, we have been providing uh, what we call public goods for the uh, for the community. So this is one of the most important public good that we provide for our uh, for 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 food system transformation in China. So uh, the new good summit. So we already had now I can say we already had four editions because we just finished the, the fourth one online. The first time we had it online. Um, so it's the first ever annual conference in China focusing on food system transformation. We actually also coined that term food system transformation in the Chinese language. And and this year, and this year we uh, this year we we uh, launched our 2030 goal. Our 2030 goal is by the year 2030, uh, we will replace 30% of our uh, consumption on, on animal protein with High quality biodiversity plant uh, plant based uh, diets. So, so that's our goal, and and we are putting this goal forward for vegans and non vegans. Uh, you know, organizations, uh, organizations and policymakers to subscribe to this goal. Uh, we we are really looking good right now uh, with you know organizations uh, interested in in. Uh, joining this goal, and we work with uh, top organizations uh, organizations around the world because you know this is a topic. Remember, you know, uh, because we are the first one to promote this. We, you know, we first to have to promote increase its legitimacy. You know, because as I as I said before, you know, animal welfare or animal uh, rights uh, does not necessarily has the legitimacy in the mainstream. So. So we work with uh, these top organizations like Yale, Harvard, and Culinary Institute of America, Johns Hopkins, Eat, Slow Food, uh, Folu. So to 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 really make it legitimate issue, you know, to put it forward there. Uh, and these are all like really mainstream organizations, right? So around the world. So that's one thing we do. Uh, so with the summit uh, every year, uh, activists and 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 uh, academic and uh, policymakers they come together. And discuss and learn from each other on, on this top political issue. And we, of course, have an animal. We all uh, we have an animal welfare uh, forum uh, in in the summit. And and second public good that we provide for for uh, the community is the Good Food Festival. Uh, it's a festival. We already had uh, two editions, and we have another edition coming up uh, at the end of the year. Uh, so I explain. I will explain that later, and hopefully you can join. Uh, so the Good Food Festival is targeted at uh, chefs. So we do that uh, before Chinese Chinese New Year every year. 
Uh, so that's really uh, interesting. And uh, we have a national competition for chefs, not for not for vegan chefs, for, for you know, for every, anyone who's interested in cooking. Of course, we are all plant-based. So we have pr- professional chefs, we have uh, uh, home cooks, we have, you know, whoever is interested in, uh, in cooking joining. And then uh, we, we have national awards and um, then we'll send them to, uh, to, uh, to places where they can receive uh, more training. So, uh, and we work also with uh, top organizations like the, uh, the Chef's Manifesto, uh, which is like a UK based uh, organization that has, you know, worked with chefs from around the world uh, to promote a more sustainable eating. So, so that's also been successful. And this year, uh, we have a very special edition because we cannot do it offline, on site. So this year, we're going to have a 24-hour relay of uh, chefs and celebrities and, 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 you know, and people from different time zones that can join and they can show us the last meal, the last meal they, have, they are having uh, for the 2020, uh, this very special year. And of course, uh, during the process, we all emphasize the importance of uh, plant-based uh, food for a better future because this is such an eventful year. Uh, and if, when we look at look into the next year, you know what we want the next year to be. Uh, so, so we will have you know uh, celebrities and 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 interesting people to join, and ordinary uh, farmers and uh, and mothers and fathers, grandpas to join. So, really look forward to that. And. And also every year we have since uh, 2019, this year was interrupted by COVID. Uh, we co-founded uh, with Yale University, uh, the Food Forward Forum. So these are, you know, if you look at a picture, these are our chefs uh, at Yale. Uh, we brought uh, nine, uh, seven chefs to Yale uh, last year. Um, so we, we basically, so this forum is targeting at food services. Uh, so we work with uh, universities like uh, uh, Yale, Harvard and uh, and also Chinese university like Peking University, and also China, China Cuisine Association and media organizations, and also Google, uh, like you know, uh, corporations like Google, um, to 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 connect. You know, these two China and US are the biggest consumers of uh, of animal animal products. So to connect these two huge countries and and try to do something to change uh, our food service. And food services are huge, right? So like one university may may be serving. 50,000 people every day uh, in, you know, in a Chinese university. So that's, that's huge. Um, and if you can do something to change a little bit of that, their service, uh, you can help uh, quite significantly. Oh, okay. And then uh, number four, I hope this will be all useful for you. Uh, this year, we, we started the Edible China project. Uh, it's the Biodiversity Food Initiative. Of course, when we say food, we mean plant-based food. Um, we we basically what we try to do is that you know we want to because food uh, is the biggest uh, factor for the erosion of uh, biodiversity in our world, and uh, so we want to work on that. And also biodiversity uh, food can also help small farmers because the big agribusinesses they love monocultures, you know, and monoculture is very destructive to our earth, to our soil and to our uh, ecosystem. So uh, because you know monocultures are mon- mono agriculture is very uh, very, uh, 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 mariculture is very um, efficient and productive. So big business love them. Uh, but small farmers, uh, you know, biodiversity will, will help them a little more. And also in, in Chinese language, when you say biodiversity, you, because when you say vegan or vegetarian, people feel like they are, you know, they are restricting their choices. But when you say biodiversity, you know, in Chinese they have, you know, when you say biodiversity means duo, duo yang xing, duo means uh, many. You know, so so it's, it sounds like you're increasing their choices instead of limiting their choices. So they love it, and and, and governments love it too because we are national uh, foundation. So if they promote, if for example, if a local government promote uh, their local uh, plant-based uh, biodiversity food, we will give them you know accreditation. You know, they say you know you are the you know uh, uh, pre- preservation site for this and this and this uh, biodiversity plants, and also if uh, if a market promotes that, or if a restaurant, or if a chef promotes uh, biodiversity, we also accredited them. You know, so if a restaurant use ten, you know, from our from our database, if they use ten local biodiversity uh, plant based food every month, they can be accredited as a biodiversity restaurant. And so, 
and, and chefs, so uh, chefs can receive that honor as well if they, you know, support biodiversity plants. So that gradually, you know, we start to erode uh, the uh, proportion of uh, animal protein on our plate. And, and also mushrooms, you know, mushrooms have so many biodiversity, diversities, and, and mushrooms are a natural enemy of, for meat. Uh, so if we uh, help the mushroom industry to grow and to expand, uh, they, 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 they gradually, you know, uh, uh, is our Mama Kitchen project, which we have just won a uh, uh, big uh, global prize by the Rockefeller Foundation. Uh, it's called the 2050 Food System Region Prize. Uh, we are probably, the, we are one of the 10 global winners and the only one from China, and I think the only one probably East Asia as well to win this prize. Uh, so the Mama Kitchen is that we will uh, build uh, a community kitchens nationwide, uh, which will have chef in residence program, like professional chefs can go there and have residence. And then they will work with uh, mamas from, you know, let me say mamas, it doesn't mean uh, not necessarily women. Uh, we don't want to uh, stereotype women's role in the family. Uh, mama means two things. Mama means like uh, our mother earth. And the mama also means the, the kind of role, you know, the role of taking care of the family and that can be a can be a, a father or a grandfather so uh so the local local people local uh, can work with professional chefs and to feature uh, to develop uh, uh plant-based recipes so mom, our mom's kitchen they are like uh, la uh plant-based labs uh studios and classrooms so it's, it's fascinating and 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 we just started uh, for the last two two months and and we had a lot of people watching online. So um, on one of the uh, live stream, we have uh, twenty, uh, we have two hundred and ten people watching online, and and uh, and for us, you know, uh, so so we we had some, uh, we I think we have found a, a really uh, very engaged engaging way for people. We don't need to talk about vegan or vegetarian. Uh, we just you know want to expand people's choices for vegan or vegetarian and vegan. And also we don't think uh, you know we we we. We think uh, 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 alternative protein like plant-based or plant-based meat, you know, they are very important. You know, they they're changing the game, but but I think they're not enough. They're not they're simply not sufficient. You know, I don't think everybody can. Uh, and there are criticism criticism about uh, uh, alternative protein because they are not necessarily healthy, and they're not necess they, are, they are they are like uh, uh, some of them are uh, really uh, deeply uh, processed, and they're not necessarily. Uh, environmentally sustainable either. Uh, they have to be fridged and they, you know, they have to be shipped. Uh, so, uh, so we, our focus now, you know, we've been defending alternative protein uh, uh, to the capacity we can, but at the same time, we, we are focusing on more like developing the more natural, uh, uh, the Chinese cuisine already have a lot of them. Uh, so we just want to uh, document them then celebrate them uh, instead of, uh, uh, people, you know, like what is now marginalized, uh, the mainstream is marginalized, uh, plant-based. So, and this number six is that this year after uh, COVID-19 broke out, uh, we were, look I, I re received a lot of calls from international media uh, for interviews, you know, uh, and to, you know, people in the West were saying, you know, why China is not closing down their wet markets? Why? Uh, so I've been answering these questions uh, all the time, you know, from international media. Uh, so I, what I try to tell them is that, you know, in the Chinese language, we don't have a term for wet market. We have like 10, 10 different terms for, for this kind of market. So it's unfair to say, you know, there's, there's one market called wet market. Uh, so so the, 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 the market in Wuhan is actually not called uh, a food market. It's called a fishery market. So, so it's a market focusing on animals. That's something that we are against. Uh, but if you say we close down all the, all the food markets in China, we, no, I don't think that's a good idea. Uh, because all these markets, they, they are like a food oasis. You know, they, they ensure people, communities can have access to fresh produce. And also they ensure a livelihood for many small farmers. So we can imagine uh, uh, this market just uh, be closed down. But uh, do, can we reimagine these markets? Uh, can these markets can be better? Of course. Um, so we are reimagining these markets uh, to be with very little or without uh, animal uh, uh, products in them. 
uh, or if they do have them, then they'll be very heavily regulated and, and be uh, downplayed, uh, and fresh produce will be, uh, be, be promoted. Uh, so, so this year, we've just finished our wet market revolution, uh, uh, what we call the Good Food Handbook for Wet Market Revolution. Uh, and we, we actually borrow that English term, which doesn't exist in Chinese, and reinterpreted it as, as wet market, the big letters, WET. W stands for well-being, T stands for ecology, T stands for transformation. And people love that, you know, because, you know, we are, you know, we're saying, this is not our word, but uh, hang on a second, we're gonna change it and, and make it, you know, uh, the right word for what we want our market to be. So, and we have been uh, approaching uh, different uh, municipal governments, like government in Wuhan. We are, we are targeting at that, that precise uh, wet market where COVID-19 was first identified. We want to turn it to, to be a vegan place. And, 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 but of course, the, the priority of the government, Wuhan government now still the COVID-19. So it, it's, it's going very slowly. But we're also uh, approaching other cities like Chengdu and Suzhou and Dalian and Nanjing. There's many governments we are approaching, and people, you know, uh, uh, reforming markets. You know, it's a it's a it's a fascinating idea. You know, it's it's, a, it's an idea that people welcome, and people love it, and, and you know, to have the possibility to support the market. And also at the same time, we also are targeting at this bringing uh, new governance for this. So we are. So together with our market reform project, we will bring in a, a proposal for a urban food policy council for the cities. So they can start to, to look at their food governance, look at their food policies in a more integrated way. Um, so number seven, uh, we recently did uh, a dialogue, which is a talk show, one of the most popular talk shows on China Global TV, which is the international branch of the China Central TV, uh, the national TV of China. And so we this is the English channel, and Dialogue is their uh, flagship uh, talk show. So we did four episodes uh, with Dialogue on the biodiversity, uh, zoonotic diseases, uh, future food system. So uh, it's, very, you know, it's very well uh, received. And uh, we have top experts from around the world. You can see the picture from down there. Uh, it's from uh, our expert from Yale University, from Rockefeller Foundation, the vice president of Rockefeller Foundation, and also from the vice president of the American uh, Culinary Institute, and uh, the, the lady, uh, the lovely lady, is uh, a vegan chef from Hong Kong. So, uh, yeah, so we, we are able to bring these topics on uh, national media. And the last one, uh, uh, which also we are part of, is the UN Food System Summit. Uh, so I will be, um, so if you know anything about this, so that's that's a huge thing, and the UN Secretary General, uh, you know, uh, in person is pushing forward for this, and all the big organizations like WHO and FAO and World Food Program, they're all part of this. So they have five action tracks uh, to change our food systems. So so now you know the, the idea is that science is science is already very clear. You know, we should change. We must change in a very urgent way, in a big way. But then uh, how? The big question is how, you know, how, how, what kind of actions can we take? Um, which, of course, include uh, everybody, most everybody agree, you know, increase uh, our plant and, 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 and also minimize uh, animal, uh, uh, to uh, promote animal welfare. So, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm in the core team for the, track, uh, 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 the action track tool, which is uh, uh, transforming con uh, consumption uh, patterns for food. And I'm, and I'm leading one of, there are three, uh, there are three work, work, uh, work streams uh, within that track. Uh, so I'm leading one of them. I'm leading the work stream on food environments, which means increasing people's access, access to healthier food. Um, mostly means uh, plant-based food and, and food policies and, and all this. So with, uh, seven, with seven, uh, 15 experts, from around the world, from five different continents. Uh, so we are working on this work stream. So if you, you know, if you want to promote anything like that, uh, in association with the UN Food System Summit, you're, you're welcome to contact me. Uh, we, we'll, you know, we try to bring your uh, project into part of it. So 
lastly, I want to show some pictures uh, from our work. Uh, so on the left hand side, you can see we were we are launching uh, at the wet market in Suzhou near Shanghai uh, two, uh, oh, one week ago, I was there. Uh, we were now launching the Good Food Handbook for Wet, Re wet Market Revolution. Uh, and then we, also, we were also launching the, uh, the signs for our eight principle uh, Good Food uh, Pledge. And then you can see our chef, our, uh, our champion chef from, from this year, the Good Food Festival, uh, his, he was cooking there for, for um, all plant-based. And on the, on the right-hand side, you can see uh, there are uh, one, two, three, 15 people, uh, including myself there. Uh, uh, these are the people who, who, contribute, who contributed to the wet market reform handbook. Uh, they're from uh, around the world. They are, of course, they're Chinese people, they're designers, they're top designers from China, top policy uh, experts. Um, and, and, and the head of the slow food in China. And there are also people from Johns Hopkins, from uh, Rockefeller Foundation in Africa. We actually, we are very aware of you know, representation. So we have people from, who work in Africa, people in Bangladesh, uh, in the world. Anyway, so um, you're welcome to contact us and, and, and visit our uh, social media. Uh, if you're interested in uh, doing something similar in your country, and if you you know need our support or in any way, uh, we'd we'd love to to do that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dan Yi, for this very informative and inspiring workshop. Uh, so we're actually we already have a lot of questions, so we are kind of tight with the time. So let's do um, let's make two breakout rooms into one uh, for ten minutes, and maybe have five minutes to share their uh, discussions. And since we have a lot of questions, we can spend like 15 minutes uh, for the Q&A. Okay, so today we have a country specific um, uh, breakout room. So we have a one for Japan, one for China, Taiwan, and South Korea. So those three countries into one and one for Australia and the US and one for Philippines, Malaysia, India, and Nepal. So um, please enter, uh, the, the countries that you uh, want to be part of. Um, also, there's one for US, Australia, and Poland. Oh, yeah. So I'd love to be able uh, to discuss um, how you know, they could push forward to uh, similar agendas in their own countries. You know, is there is there anything that they can identify with? If there's anything that, but they can somehow, of course, adapt to their uh, country's reality and their context. I'd love to hear that because we know, uh, we, we, I love the way that you're building alliance in Asia. So you can see you know, how we can, we can do that. Welcome back to the main room. So now we want to have some time for, uh, to share the, uh, what they've discussed in each group. Um, hello, <laughs> I'm Hi. Rachel from the Malaysia, Philippines and India group. And we talk about you can promote good food um, by using social medias. And Manya talk about it, it's, it's also important to educate people um, so they understand our intention. And instead of saying that we are going to extreme. And um, we also talk about that uh, most people care I don't really care about if the food is plant-based or not. They really care about what they care is, um, is the food delicious or not. So I think it's kind of important to share that, um, not really to share that this food is plant-based, but this food is delicious. And this is like people, as long as it's delicious, no matter uh, are you a meat lover or what, they were just, they were, they are willing to try it. This is something that I have seen that, delicious is more important than is it plant-based or not. Yeah. So I think that most people think that plant-based is um, not delicious. It's mainly because the, the people who cook it make it not delicious. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is from my, uh, my group. And uh, yeah, thank you. Hi, um, this is Yvette from the, the United States, um, Australia, and Poland room. Uh, we had a really awesome discussion prompted by Jian Yi's presentation, especially on the nomenclature of um, plant forward food. So for example, in China, there is no word for vegan. Uh, the question is, 
uh, really to create the culture to educate consumers, to allow them to not be confused uh, so they can distinguish the animal uh, based food and plant based food, but also to feel uh, that they have an appetite that they want to eat this uh, and also to um, inform them of any kind of allergies. Uh, so on this note, we talked about the recent um, amazing news that uh, the EU legislation allows plant-based food companies to use burgers and sausages to describe their products instead of um, meat discs uh, and tubes, which absolutely sounds disgusting. Nobody wants to eat that. And it would not be fair that they're not on level playing field. Uh, so just um, are we were really, um, we, we agree on the fact that it's important to have um, the level playing field uh, to have endorsement from the legislative side, uh, the policymakers. Um, so, you know, the companies can make their products available that's so delicious and healthy for, to consumers. And then uh, another thing we touched on is to um, a kind of like business innovative mindset, how to benchmark your plant-based products against um, animal products. Um, so uh, Nadia mentioned it might not be fair and um, competitive to benchmark your plant-based burger against a beef burger. Instead, maybe create a new product category so um, consumers have realistic expectations. Also, that's kind of a wide market space. I love, I love this, I love this, uh, really. Uh, and I, I wish you guys had more time. <laughs> you know, I, I believe there was really uh, lovely discussion. Uh, I, I, my apologies for going over the time. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely, you know, the, the thing that you, uh, you event mentioned just now, uh, this is very important. We realized that as well. Uh, so we, this year, we, we've been doing a vegan, vegan labeling. So in China, we don't have vegan labels. Uh, so we are, at, doing vegan labeling now. Uh, so we have big corporations with, with us on board now. We have Nestle, Nestle has joined us. So we're gonna, uh, we hope our vegan label, uh, the, Chinese, the first uh, vegan label in China will come out next year. That's very important, you know, so to make people feel like this is a trend, you know, this is something that you can, yes, yeah, sub subscribe to. Uh, so now we want to move into a Q&A section. Um, so I'm going to be reading out the questions for you. So if you have any more questions, please type away uh, in the chat box. Uh, so Nadia from Germany asks, China is a country which can push forward rules for its people. How can law help push people to adopt more plant-based diets? Uh, so for instance, she said in, in the German exports of, export, uh, of pork to China, pork is classified as a basic food. So I think what she's asking is if, um, if China changes this category of, of pork as meat, uh, pork and the meat as something basic or necessary, do you think that people would change their perception of it? Yeah, yeah, this, this is something, pork is something very special in the Chinese cuisine because, you know, pork is considered as the meat. You know, when we say the meat, you know, it is the default meat uh, uh, for Chinese traditional cuisine. So. So that's that's the kind of uh, uh, that might be a hard battle to to fight. So when we when we do our work, uh, we we have to you know constantly uh, strategize. You know what might work best under uh, each some circumstances. So that's a great question, uh, a great suggestion. Uh, but I not sure good moment to do that. So actually next year. Next year, we are targeting more at, uh, at the beef because the, uh, next year is the year of the cow in China. So, or in, Chinese, in, in some other countries as well. Uh, so we are targeting at cow. So uh, I'm making a documentary. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna rescue a cow and I'm gonna raise that cow for a year. And I'm gonna document that and make a film out of it. And I talk about all these issues with cows. And, and I'm, I'm gonna raise a virtual cow as well. So, so it's a very exciting project to do. So we are talking, we, we are talking at uh, cows and bees because that also connects to uh, the bigger topics like uh, climate change. Beef is very, very uh, has a big uh, carbon footprint. Uh, so I hope, I hope sometime, you know, in the new future, there will be opportunities will arise uh, for us to target at pork. Uh, but we need to be, um, you know, tactical uh, when we when we work. 
Wow, that is yeah, so think, exciting. Yeah, thank you so much. Oh, yeah, if any of you are artists or any, any, you know, if you want to contribute to that project, the child project. Yeah, I think that's a very exciting, Sorry. that's a very exciting project. Thank you for sharing that with us. Is meeting, is eat, eating meat a sign of prosperity in China? So is a uh, social status. It was, it used to be, it used to be, and still is for some people, um, but it's changing. It's changing because uh, it's like, you know, uh, some of my vegan friends are saying, you know, why are you still bragging about eating eating uh, seafood? You know, it, it just uh, betray that you are, you know, uh, you're, you're, you're kind of, uh, 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 how can I say that? You know, you're, you're out of fashion. So, so it's changing, but I, I won't say it will change overnight, but uh, it will change if you uh, target uh, if you try to tell a different stories with what you do, um, if you tell different stories of what perspective is, prosperity is, and what, what a good life is, you know, which many uh, vegan friends are, are striving for, uh, and that's going to change. And you can see that changing, actually. Uh, we had a project called the Meat Atlas China, the China Meat Atlas. So we had, uh, we had a Meat Atlas of uh, each province, uh, how much meat, con meat they're consuming. And it's a very straightforward way to see uh, uh, and, and how much meat we already are consuming. And also uh, find some connections between, uh, between the health problems and, and, and within, within that province and, and how much meat they are consuming. So, so this is probably something you can also uh, tr try to do in your country, you know, some kind of meat atlas. Thank you. I definitely agree that like changing perception is a, such a very important aspect of promoting veganism. Um, so another question, um, do you do any work engaging producers? So like farmers or industries and how can you uh, push farmers and industries to implement these changes to adopt like plant-based um, food? Yeah, yeah. We do work directly with uh, uh, producers with our Mama's Kitchen project. You know, we buy only from small farmers and also we uh, connect with them with our uh, biodiversity project, the Edible China project. But in general, uh, for animal welfare, because we don't buy any uh, animal products, so we don't work with producers directly, but we do work with organizations who are, who are promoting uh, animal welfare from uh, among producers. So we want to help them uh, because we are mostly working with consumers uh, and policymakers. So we kind of, when we want to support the best practices in that industry by uh, educating the consumers, because if the consumers are not buying those products, you know, they, they cannot, they're not gonna continue. So yeah, so that's how we do it. We don't work directly with uh, animal agricultural producers. Uh, but we just support people who work with them to raise uh, animal welfare standards. Great. Um, so we have a lot of questions asking about your organization. Um, one person asked um, how they can support mm -hmm. your team. And another person asked, asked when uh, the next summit is. Yeah. Okay. The next summit, we don't know about COVID. <laughs> How's it going? Uh, you know, we will ask. Uh, normally, we will have it in the summer. This year, we had it in October. It was postponed. Uh, so yeah, so please, please, uh, pay, you know, subscribe to our uh, to our Twitter account and Facebook, uh, and you will know when you know uh, months ahead when it's going to happen. And uh, about our work, uh, you know, my personal work, I I have this uh, documentary project. The only one that I'm working now is called a Zodiac Twelve. You know, China has twelve zodiac animals. And I think it's the best way, you know, to talk about how uh, human, our relations with non-human animals um, through the lenses of these 12 animals. And they're, they're very representative, you know, they represent, uh, they are farm animals like, uh, like cows, uh, pigs, uh, they are animals used for fur, like, uh, like rabbits, you know, they are animals used for, uh, for, for sports, like horse, you know, and, and you know, there's the Zodiac, uh, you can look at the website, Zodiac, 12.net and uh, and, and uh, Peter Singer Peter Singer is our uh, advisor uh, to the to the to, the, uh, to our film so uh, the cow film uh, is 
the cow project is one of uh, one of them. So if you want to support that, you know, you have a lot of uh, artistic talents. Uh, please help us. Or research talents. Please help us uh, with that. Uh, no, zodiac twelve uh, in 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 numbers. Um, zodiac and then the uh, num number one two uh, dot net. And and also, uh, I would think you know if you can if you want to start something like this, uh, the good food in your country. You know, we want we want to be help helpful. So we will work with AACA and see if we can provide any seed funds or any training to you uh, at your country, and and also probably help you uh, connect with policymakers and other things through my uh, through my work at the UN uh, UN uh, Food System Summit. Um, so I hope we can be helpful in that way. So in terms of you help us. Uh, we, I think if you can do something in your country, that's the most, the biggest way you can help us. Uh, but if you want to be part of what we do, uh, the UN uh, Food System Summit is very, very, very important. So I would, you know, I, I think it's, uh, I cannot emphasize it more by saying that, you know, as vegans, we shouldn't marginalize ourselves. You know, well, we have to be, you know, you have to be aware they are, um, a huge progress that is happening in 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 the mainstream uh, with all these things going on in uh, uh, promoting healthier and more sustainable diets. Um, so we want, you know, as vegans, we don't, we can't, you know, I I cannot I cannot uh, I cannot bear uh, to think about uh, the animals suffer every with every passing day. So we want something massive. You know, we 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 can't afford we can't afford to waste our time. So we want something massive. No, we want something massive. We want massive change. If we want game changer, we have to work with the mainstream. We have to change the mainstream. And we have to basically tap into whatever tide there is, uh, like the food system transformation. This, you know, this new buzzword uh, is huge. You know, all, all, all the major organizations are supporting it. And, and we'll be, you know, we, this year we've been approached by even some, uh, some, uh, some, I don't, I don't want to uh, reveal their name, but some of the huge uh, luxury brands, uh, French luxury brands, and they started to talk about uh, food system transformation as well. So they want to work with us uh, to promote uh, plant-based and, and, and also biodiversity foods. So, so I would you know, encourage you, you know, uh, to really uh, keep your eyes open for that. And that's the biggest way we can bring massive change into your, in your country and in the world. Thank you so much for everything that you're doing. It's so inspiring to hear uh, different, all these different projects that you're working on. And uh, thank you for the advice as well. Um, one more quick question. Um, how are the characters pronounced? So the, the last character that you introduced, how, how is it pronounced? Okay, uh, I probably will write down them for you. And it's hard for you because you're not Chinese. They have tones, they have tones. So it's kind of hard, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I probably will say it later. Uh, the first, uh, the first one is Tu, and and Cao, and uh, Hui, and M A N G Mang. Uh, the third tone. Uh, I don't know if that, that that makes any sense to you. Uh, so M A N G Mang. Thank you so much. Uh, so it's almost uh, time. So thank you all. Thank you for all the attendees for joining this workshop. And thank you, Jenny, for this inspiring, amazing uh, workshop. Um, yeah, if you want you. to-